In this video, I want to show you how to install and run Linux Mint on your Windows 10 PC. I'm assuming here that you have Hyper-V already enabled on your Windows 10 PC. If you want to know how to enable Hyper-V on your Windows 10 PC, please take a look at the video in the description that will take you step by step on how to do this. First, you need to download Linux Mint. So open your web browser. Go to linuxmint.com and press enter. Hover over download and click Linux Mint 20. This is the latest version. It might be different when you follow this video because there might be a newer version. So click on it. And then you have your download links. I'm going to download the Cinnamon version. And here choose download link that is closest to you. Here I'm going to choose Canada University of Waterloo. And the download begins. It's not a very big download, but it will take time. It's around 2 GB as you see here. So I'm going to accelerate this video now and I'll continue when the download finishes. So now the download finished. Let's check it out in the downloads folder. So I clicked on the three dots here and I chose show in folder. And this is the download and it is finished. Now we have to open Hyper-V Manager and start installing Linux Mint on a new virtual machine. Now I will be starting Hyper-V Manager. So in the search box type Hyper and select Hyper-V Manager. We need to create a new virtual machine. So I'm going to click on New, Virtual Machine. Click on Next. Let's name it Linux Mint. I'm going to keep the store virtual machine in a different location unchecked just to keep the default location. So this is where it will be stored. Click on Next. I will be selecting Generation 1. Next, I will give it 4 GB. So it's 4096 MB which adds to 4 GB. Click Next. Connection, I'm going to connect it to the internet. And this is a previous connection that I created. So once again, if you want to know how to configure Hyper-V Manager with an external facing connection like this one, please take a look at the video in the description. Click on Next. And the virtual hard disk, I'm going to keep it as it is, Linux Mint but I don't need 127 gigabyte, so I'm going to give it only 40 gigabyte. Click on Next, Installation Options, and here we are going to select the ISO file that we just downloaded, so I'm going to click on Install an Operating System, and click Image File, and Browse to the Download folder where you downloaded the ISO image of Linux Mint. Choose it, and click on Open, and then click on Next, and now click on finish. So now we need to first click the virtual machine, click on settings, and here we need to give it one more virtual processor because by default it takes only one. So let's increase this by one. So now it has two virtual processors and it will be much faster like that. Click OK. Click on connect and then let me bring this to the center and then once we connect it to the virtual machine just click on power on and it will be powered on and the Linux Mint installation starts. So these are the options when we start from the ISO file. So I'm going to keep it on start Linux Mint and hit enter. Let's give it a minute to start. And here it is starting. And this is Linux Mint started from the ISO file. So now to install it, we have to double click on install Linux Mint. The language I want it to be English, so I'm going to click on continue. Of course, you can choose the language you want. And here it's asking me to choose the keyboard layout. 
I have an English US keyboard layout, so I'm gonna just click on continue. Now, if you want to install other codecs for other multimedia files, you can click here. I'm gonna choose it. Click on continue. On this screen, it's asking me about the installation type because this is a virtual machine. I'm gonna keep it on erased disk because the virtual machine disk is brand new. So I'm gonna click install now. And here it's asking me to confirm. So I'm just gonna click on continue. The time zone, it detected that I am in the Eastern time zone. Of course, if you have another time zone, feel free to select the one that you're in. Click on continue. And here you should identify yourself. So I'm gonna put my website name. The computer name, I'm gonna leave it as it is. The username, I'm gonna change it to KST. It's shorter and faster. And for the password, I'm gonna put also a password. And I'm gonna keep it on require my password to log in. And I'm not gonna choose any other option. So I'm gonna click on continue. And here's the installation starting. Depending on your hard disk speed and on your computer speed, the installation time will vary. Here I have a very fast computer and I have an SSD disk, so the installation shouldn't take long. So now the installation finished. The button continue testing, this is if you want to continue like running Linux Mint from the ISO, but this is not a persistent testing. So I'm gonna choose restart now to restart Linux Mint and log in and show you a little bit the interface. And here it is starting. And shortly it should ask me for my password. So this is my password and hit enter to log in. At first login after restart, you need to do some configurations. Here we received a message about the VGA driver. So for Hyper-V, there's no remedy for this. Just close the message. And the welcome screen here, if you wanna check it out, I'm gonna close it also. And there are two things that we need to do. The first thing is to change the root password. So open the terminal window and key in sudo password root and hit enter. Here, put your password, your own password, and then this is a new password for root. So put a strong password for root and then retype it again and press enter. So this is the first configuration that we needed to do. The second configuration is that we need to update the installation. So I clicked on the bottom right corner on the update icon, and then here it will ask me if I wanna change the mirror to something near me. From my experience, don't change the mirror, just keep it the original one, it's faster and then click on refresh to get the latest updates. And here it's downloading the package information updates that should be applied to my system. And now it found that the update program should be updated. So I just clicked on update and I'm putting my password and authenticate and it will update the updating program. And then here it is downloading the package files to update the program. Now it's finished and it's showing me all the available updates for my installation. Because this is a fresh install, of course, the updates are many. So when you click on install updates, it will show you the dependencies. So here, just click OK, put your password and then click authenticate. And the downloading of the packages should begin. This is a very lengthy update. So it took me around three hours, but here, of course, I'm summarizing it for maybe a minute.
So here the downloading of the packages has finished and then the installing the software just begun. And as I told you, I'm accelerating the video here so that we don't wait for it. After the update finishes, it will prompt you to restart. Just close it and go to the menu, click on it and then click the shutdown button and choose restart. It will restart for the fresh updates. Here, put your password. And this is a welcome screen again. I'm going to uncheck it this time and close it. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you think this video might help others, please share it, subscribe to my channel, and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.